Hey guys, Stephanie here with the Aeroponic Tower Channel. Today we're gonna build a tower. I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to build one of these. I can manage it, I can carry it, and that's one of the reasons why I chose these because you can grow an enormous amount of food, but they are still light and manageable for me so I don't have to call in reinforcements with my husband or my children to help me out with these. So let's build one. My kit is a family home garden kit that I'm opening up and I will link that below. But what that is, is it's the flex towers. So there's two different types of towers. There's a flex and a home. The home is if you wanna grow a lot of leafy greens and grow inside your home most of the time. These are more for outdoor gardening. They have a bigger tank. It's a 20 gallon tank. It allows you to have more space between waterings because there's so much water in the tank and you can grow a lot more produce as far as multiple tomato plants or multiple pepper plants or eggplants and some of those things. You can still grow eggplant and tomatoes and cucumbers and things in a home unit. It's just a little bit smaller and you're gonna be limited with space where with the flex you're not. I always recommend adding an extension kit to every tower, especially the flex, because the flex, when you purchase it, it comes this height. That's the standard. But if you purchase this home, I think it's called the home, it's called the family garden. So if you purchase the family garden, it actually comes with three towers. It comes with a cage to go with them and it comes with the extension kit for each tower. So you already get those. So it's a really great value. So I'm gonna build these, show you guys how easy it is. If you were to order just a single flex, it's not going to have this extension kit on that. So know that. So when I open these boxes, sometimes the add-ons to this family garden unit are already in the boxes so there may be some slight differences but i will address those as i see what's in this box and sorry about the lighting guys we are headed out of town i have to build these towers i have trays of produce that need a home uh, my tomatoes my peppers just so much produce that needs a home so i've got to get these towers built and get them outside ready to go before we leave. So sorry about the lighting. It just, with the bright sun coming in this way and the dark garage, it's just the best I could do. So I'm gonna slide this one over. This one is hooked up and ready to go. It doesn't have water in it yet. If I'm growing in this garage, I go ahead and just bring the hose in here and fill them up. You can fill them up with five gallon buckets, but if you need to move them, it's best to move them before you put the water in because the water obviously is gonna make them very heavy. So I'm gonna move this one out to the gardens and then we will open the next box. All right, so I recycle all these boxes. I put them in the garden or feed them to my worms. But I do love how simple they make this. All right, so first we're gonna have first we, first we're gonna have the the top of the base. We have four grow ports, which is gonna be the standard with this, plus you have the one attached to the base. So that's five grow ports. That is 20 spots to grow food. By adding an extension, I can jump that up to 28. So 28 total with an extension. Okay. You're gonna get your nutrients, your A and your B. We have a baggie. This is the top. Uh, that goes on at the very end. You're gonna have your you're gonna have your pH test kit. This is how you're going to test your water. It's just a liquid dropper and a little plastic container. It also has a guide, so you know what you're looking for. Super easy. This is actually all I use. I still have these from having some of my towers over a year and a half. I still have a ton of this left. And I just found it works great, it's simple. So that is what I use. You can reorder these at Tower Garden. You won't have to order them very often, especially as you get more familiar with how your tanks are. Measuring cup, I love these. This is how I put the A solution and the B solution into my tank and I use them 
for putting vermiculite on top of my seed starts. I use them for taking water out of my tank and watering my seedlings. I don't know, it's simple, but I love this little measuring cup. This is the cap that goes on the hole to the base. I like to save these baggies and store my seeds in them. You're gonna get a guide and some instructions for building it. More cardboard. All right, this is what we call the shower cap. This is the very top of your tower. You're going to have some little black suction cup things. These are to hold your pump to the bottom. They're like a little suction cup for your pump. I actually don't use these. And then in here, and I hate building things, guys, so I just love that this is it. We have some, I don't know, twisty things and some washers. And that's all we have. That's all we need to build these. So you're going to get a pH plus, a pH negative and a pH plus. What these are is when you test your water, if your pH is too high, you're going to add a teaspoon of pH negative. I just go squirt. If your pH is too low, you're going to add a squirt of pH positive. So the, you have these to adjust your water. These last a very long time. Indoor outdoor timer. These I love because I don't have to think through and create anything. It comes with a timer. You can plug in two towers per timer. So with this kit, because it's three towers, it actually comes with two timers. Um, and I have lots of extra timers because I have other kits. So you're just gonna plug two in there. You push this button and you set it to zero if your towers are outside. That means it's gonna turn on and water for three minutes every 12 minutes. And you push it again and it's number one and that's for indoors. That's gonna turn the tank on for 15 minutes every 45 minutes. We want more water getting to the roots when they're outside because of evaporation and heat and all of those things. So this does all the work for us. We don't even have to think about it. Here's the pump. It's just a simple fish tank pump. Then in here, we have our garden supplies and they give you some supplies. I talk a lot about seed starting on this channel. I'm not saying don't use these, I just don't love these. Uh, if you were to use this container, I still recommend getting a heat mat and a grow light to go on top. Um, I'll link some of my seed starting videos below, just some more thoughts on that. But it is nice because you do get all of these things so you're ready to go. If you buy an extension kit, especially a baby greens kit, you're gonna need to more order more rock wool. I recommend ordering more rock wool at the very beginning when you're first purchasing your tower anyway, because this is the thing that you'll go through the most. The tower garden nutrients last a really long time. The one gallon versions will last up to nine months. Uh, vermiculite, you use very little of this, so you're gonna have this forever. You can rebuy it on Amazon, but rock wool, you will be replacing as you start new seeds, and I recommend starting seeds quite often, so definitely grab some extra rock wool. You get your net pots. These are what are gonna go into the little grow ports of your tower, so you're good to go on those. And then they give you some seeds in the seed package. They're going to have butter lettuce, bib, we've got bib lettuce, arugula, gourmet lettuce, some basil, kale, and rainbow Swiss chard. I like the rainbow Swiss chard, I like the kale, I like the, bas the basil. Not super fond of their lettuce choices, but it is nice that you have some lettuce ready to go so you can start growing right away. So I'm going to put this over in my grow station with my growing supplies. And then the last thing is our tub. Oh, not the last thing. The next thing is our tub. And the last two things in this box, we have our metal poles. And I'll show you how these work in just a moment. And you're gonna get this tube. 
And this tube is to empty your tank. So there's some ways to siphon. Basically at the end, I'll show you, but you stick this on the top of your tank and as the pump pushes water, it will go into the tube and siphon the water out. I have never used these. I've got a collection of them now. I just wait until my tank's nearly empty or I don't find it too heavy to just pick up and dump if I need to. And I would never dump it when it has a lot of water in it anyway. So just so you know, that's what this is. It's a siphon to empty your tower. All right, so now we're gonna build this. The first thing we wanna do is take our pump, Take our blue cord and you just stick this in here and you just screw this in like this. Take the pump, take the pump wire, untangle it. And it's gonna go through this hole. So that's it for our pump. Next, next I'm gonna screw Next, I'm going to screw the blue wire into the bottom of the base. Money. And actually, if you screw this part first and then the pump, it's easier. But either way, it's in. Make sure it didn't because I did it backwards. It twisted the pump up a little bit, so we're gonna straighten that wire out. This is if you wanted to put your pump feet on and stick your pump to the bottom of the tank, this is where you would do that. I don't do that because they don't seem to hold very well and it does fine with the pump just laying on the bottom. And next, we're going to take two of our little I don't know what you call these. Screws, bolts, and two washers. And inside your grow cages, there are gonna be, you're gonna see the letters A and B. And what we're doing is alternating from A to B, A to B, building it to the top so that it's easy to get these on. So I am going to take my, my metal pole here that has the bolt on it. I'm gonna stick it in where it says A. I'm going to do that with both of them. And then you just want to reach inside your tank. I've got my opening over here so I can do this. Or actually, I like to just flip it sideways again. And we're going to secure these. Let's secure the next one. There we go. And actually guys, this is like the hardest part. And it's super easy, it's not hard. So just make sure they're really tight because we want that nice and secure. And now we're gonna start sliding on our grow cages. So I mentioned that inside here, there's an A and a B. I put these in the A spot. So now I'm gonna slide them in the B holes. All right, in the next one, we do A. It's easy to tell from the bottom too if it's an A or a B because the A's have two holes. And the B's only have one. So now we're at a B. And because it's kind of wobbly right now, sometimes you just have to fuss with them for a second. But again, super easy, very low tech. All 
And if this was me trying to grow food in my in-ground gardens, I would be filthy, covered in manure, tired, hauling large amounts of either bags or barrels of compost. So I really appreciate how clean and simple this is. So this would be it if you didn't buy an extension kit. You would put your shower cap on here and then your, your top. I'm gonna add an extension kit to these. So if you order the extension kit, you're gonna get these two extra half rods and two more grow cages. And what we wanna do is stick this one on. We just did A, so this will go on B. And these have a little screw at one end of them. And this one's being fussy. There we go. So if you could only get one side to pop through at a time, just do one at a time and it makes it easier. So I'm just gonna screw this in until it's nice and tight. Same thing, screw this one in. You can't hurt these, so if you have to do what I just did. These are very durable, so you gotta give it a little tap to get it to cooperate, no big deal. Okay, so now we're gonna do A. This is our last one. Then we have our shower cap top. The water is gonna feed from the bottom basin up to the top and land inside of here. The water will come out this middle section and then all these holes are so that it can rain back, back down. So I have my washers and my little screw things. And what did we do? A, so now we're gonna put this one on. All right, you put your washer on. I can do this by feeling. So if you wanted to step stool, you could, but it's really easy to just kind of feel where everything is. You want these to be nice and tight. This is what creates stability in our tower. The tightness of the screws on the top and the bottom. Let's do the other side. All right, and that's it. It's nice and stable. You can put a screw down here to stabilize it. Somebody had the question, can these handle wind? And yes, they're totally fine because you've got a lot of water in the tank. It would take an enormous amount of wind to push this over, but you can push the top over a little bit easier. So if you wanted to secure those, you can secure those to the base. I don't have that problem here. We do get high winds, but I've never had enough wind to worry about it. So they are done at this point being built aside from Our top, this goes over there to cover the hole. I'm gonna carry this outside, add water to it, add nutrients to it, and this is ready to go, except for I need to put my cages in here. These cages are reusable, so when your plant is done, I cut the, the roots off the bottom and I pull the plant out I clean them and reuse them. I even reuse them after they've broken a little bit and they work just fine. So definitely don't throw these away after every use. I don't throw them away until they are so broken that it's not salvageable to use them. I've only had to replace these about once. So my cost of materials with these per year is like $5. And I have a lot of towers. So very minimal. I guess at some point, since I bought a lot of my towers at the same time, they might all need to be refreshed, but I would say the maximum cost per month for, or per the maximum cost per year for something like this is no more than $10, and that's with several towers. So the cost to run these is very low. It's depending on your power company. Um, it can be anywhere from $4 to $8 a month to run a tower full time. If you had the lights on, that's going to increase it a little bit. The lights take more power than the pump. So that's why I grow outside most of the time. I grow outside 
three seasons out of the year except for one tower will come in in the summer so I can grow things like cilantro and bok choy and lettuce when it's really hot outside and then in the winter I keep a couple in the garage with lights on so that we can have fresh produce throughout the winter but overall the, the the maintenance cost on these is very low. You need to replace your rock wool. Get those in bulk, so it's about under two cents per rock wool. You've got your nutrients, a gallon of nutrients from Tower Garden of the A and the B lasts about nine months. Um, you may have to buy a couple of cages every couple years. Very, very minimal cost. So the only real cost to these is the power that's needed, which is also very low. Um, and then you have to think, even if you had an in-ground garden, you're still running, most people are still running electricity to water their gardens. These use 95% less water because we're going to fill this with water and nutrients and those are going to recycle in the system until the plants take it all up. Uh, it's pretty sealed, so there's very little evaporation if we have this all planted out. If you only had a couple of things and you had a lot of open grow ports, you might have more evaporation. But there are some things you can buy. Some people make things that you can use to cover those ports. So overall, very, very cost effective to grow in these. I have found my in-ground gardens where we are because I can't get soil easily. I can't get free wood chips, all of those things. They have cost me a lot of money and definitely have not been a return on my investment for the food I've been able to produce with them where these have. Once these are paid for, these are a huge return on investment. They last for so many years. They've had, there's been people farming in these for over 10 years outside. They've had zero nanoparticle breakdown or issues with them. There might be times you have to replace a pump or something like that, but those are very minimal costs. I think the pumps are like $40 or something. So this is it. It's built. I'm going to carry it outside, fill it with water, nutrients, get my starts. Let me show you these amazing starts. I have all of these ready to go. These are my dwarf tomatoes. So I'm super excited to get those in the tower and watch what they do this year. So that's it guys. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.